back wall. And at that stage, it's an early stage, it's like a small forest fire. The cell, there's not that many AFib cells. They're not very strong. They don't wake up very much and they like to sleep. So at that stage, the person's not going in and out of AFib very much. The cells wake up a little bit, go to sleep a lot. They're maybe in at 1%, 3%, 5% of the time. And over 90% of the time, they're under the control of their normal rhythm. But if every year you get older, you could form more atrial fibrillation cells because it's a progressive problem that gets worse primarily by just getting older. And if there's a ton of AFib cells on multiple walls of the heart, any part of them awake, you're in AFib. But all of the AFib cells have to be asleep for your normal rhythm to take back over control of your heart and be back in your normal rhythm. And so the more AFib cells you have and the more walls these AFib sources or triggers are on, the easier it is for any part of it to wake up and the harder it is for all of it to be asleep before you to be completely back in normal rhythm. So you just spend more and more time in it. Now. It keeps on progressing and you spread to five out of the six walls. That's like a forest fire that's, you know, 80, 90% of the forest. Guess what? You have enough AFib cells that's waking up 80 to 90% of the time. And you're only out of rhythm, back in normal rhythm, maybe 10% of the time. Now, people always ask, well, does anyone ever live long enough where they spread AFib cells to all six walls? And when you cover all six walls, will they be in it 100% of the time? Absolutely. Usually it takes 10 to 15 years or so, depending on how quickly you're forming these AFib cells to reach that point. But when you really do have it on all six walls, like a forest fire that's covered the entire forest, you will be in AFib 100% of the time. And that's when we say your AFib is permanent. And at that point, no medication will put the AFib to sleep. No procedure, like an ablation procedure, will be able to get rid of enough from the inside. You just have too much AFib cells. It's like a forest fire that's covered the entire forest. When it's covering every inch of the forest, that's when we say we can't put it out anymore. It's just too chronic, it's just too permanent. And at that point, we say, look, the AFib isn't gonna kill you as long as you don't have a clot and a stroke. You're gonna live just as long as everybody else. But at that point, we cannot get you out of it. The best we can do is just slow it down and try to make it so that you can tolerate it or don't feel it. So there's these different stages. Now, officially, the classification is paroxysmal, atrial fibrillation, persistent atrial fibrillation, long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation, and permanent atrial fibrillation. So this is just us putting sort of markers on this, what's really a continuum of disease or a continuum of the forest fire. It's not you know, like early, mid, late, permanent. It's kind of small forest fire, maybe medium forest fire, you know, large forest fire, permanent forest fire. It's the same kind of thing. So we define paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, which means episodic, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation.
we say your atrial fibrillation is permanent and we cannot get you out of it. Now, once again, these are sort of arbitrary classifications. They're no different than saying a small forest fire, a medium forest fire, a large forest fire, and a permanent forest fire. But clearly, there's, you know, it's a continuum of, of disease, a continuum process. You know, could you have a, a small forest fire that's closer to being a medium-sized forest fire? or a medium-sized forest fire that's closer to being a large-sized forest fire. Who's to say that, you know, you spend six days in AFib at a time, that the number of AFib sources or triggers isn't more like what we would see in somebody who's in the next stage, persistent. So you can't necessarily just say, okay, paroxysmal means you only have a few AFib sources and then the later stage you have a whole lot more. It's really more of a continuum of disease, which has more to do with when we do an ablation from the end Therefore, if you have a more advanced stage of AFib you, and you're going to have an ablation, you want to make sure you go to somebody who can do more complex ablations and not somebody who's just doing a little bit. If you had four walls worth of AFib and you're in it 70% of the time and they only get rid of one wall, well, they're not going to really get you a good result. So this is where the staging of atrial fibrillation has its most impact, is trying to get the person back to normal rhythm, either with a medication or a procedure, and how difficult that might be.